This is a good year for Jordan Brand. We're getting back some of the most iconic sneakers of all time, and this is one of those shoes. What's up, everybody? I'm Seth Fowler, and today I'm reviewing the 2022 retro of the OG Air Jordan 2s, the Chicago's, and I am so stoked they're back. So I've said this in pretty much every video that I've reviewed a pair of Air Jordan 2s over the last year or so, but Jordan Brand is making a heavy push for the Air Jordan 2s and really trying to push this shoe back into the spotlight because for years the Air Jordan 2 has been one of their least popular silhouettes. Out of all the retro Jordans from the Jordan 1 to the Jordan 14, this is widely considered to be the least popular. And I'm not going to dive into all of the reasons why I think that could be, but I do feel like the Air Jordan 2 is definitely an underrated silhouette. It's not my favorite Air Jordan silhouette, not by a long shot, but I definitely feel like this is a shoe that deserves more love than it gets. And 12 years after we got the last retro of the original Air Jordan 2 colorway back in 2010, we're finally getting this shoe back, and in my opinion, it absolutely lives up to the hype. But before we dive any deeper into the review, let's find out how and when you can grab a pair of these Air Jordan 2s for yourself. So of course you can grab a pair of these early on the resale market. I grabbed my pair from Fine Line 1721, but this shoe officially releases on December 30th, pushed back from, I believe, sometime in November for a retail price of $200. While in my opinion that price is higher than I would like to pay for a pair of Air Jordan 2s, I do have to admit that this is one of the better quality Air Jordan 2s. It's not the original Italian leather, which we'll get to later on in the video, but it is one of the better Air Jordan 2s that have released recently. And in a way, this is sort of a remastered Air Jordan 2. It's about as close to the original as you can get without paying thousands for a pair from 1987. But before we get any farther into the shoe itself, let's first take a look at the box because not only did Jordan brand completely reimagine the Air Jordan 2 to make it look just like the original silhouette, they also also completely redid the box. So according to Graham, the design lead at Jordan Brand, not only did they take the art from the original Air Jordan 2 box, they actually 3D scanned the original box to make this box as close to the original as possible. In my opinion, that's a lot of effort for something you could have done with the ruler, but hey, to each their own. And you know what? Honestly, I'm happy they did it because it shows that they really care about the silhouette and they're really passionate about doing right by not only the shoe, but also the packaging itself. So the top of the box comes in this cream color with the Air Jordan Wings logo printed on top of it in this darker tan. One of the details that I really love about this box is that on the edges of the box you've actually got the die cut wings logo which I think looks incredible and then the bottom half of the box comes in black and on one end you've got the size tag and as you guys can see I grabbed a size 9 which is my true size according to the tag the official colorway of this shoe is white varsity red black but the awesome packaging does not end there inside the box you actually get a pamphlet that is made to look just like the original pamphlet with all the Air Jordan 2 tech specs inside which I think is incredible I love when Jordan brand does stuff like this it shows that it's not just another retro it's not just another remake of the colorway they're actually Actually taking a shoe that has a lot of history and has a lot of people's nostalgia tied into it and doing something that really makes you remember what it was like to actually buy the shoe when it first came out. I wasn't around in 1987, I was born in 1992, but I could imagine if I was grabbing a pair of Air Jordan 2s when they first dropped back in 1987, I would absolutely be looking through this pamphlet and looking at all the little diagrams showing you what's inside the shoe. I think it's awesome. Not only that, but when you first get this pair of Air Jordan 2s, it actually comes unlaced like it did originally. And you also get this really cool hang tag, which obviously I've taken off the shoe, but it comes in cream with the tan wings logo printed onto it. I think it's an awesome touch. In my opinion, all these details make not only the shoe, but also the packaging super special. And that's one of the reasons why I really love this release. But enough with the packaging, let's get into the shoe itself. The reason why you guys all clicked on this video, and honestly, one of the best remakes of an Air Jordan sneaker, in my opinion, ever. So according to Jordan Brand for this release, they obsessed over the details of making this shoe as close to the original as possible. Not only did they adjust all the panels on the upper of this shoe, but apparently they also retooled the midsole, which is actually a pretty expensive thing to do. The one thing that they didn't do on this shoe that I really wish they had was manufacture it in Italy like the original was and use real Italian leather. Instead, this shoe is probably manufactured in China where all of their other shoes are manufactured. Nothing wrong with that, but the original Air Jordan 2 was designed to be a luxury shoe, a luxury follow-up to the Air Jordan 1, and that shoe was originally manufactured in Italy with with real Italian leather. Unfortunately, that's the one thing that they couldn't bring back with that retro, and I'm sure the designers really wanted to do that. I'm sure that's something that they pushed for, but knowing Jordan brand and knowing Nike and knowing big companies in general, it has a lot to do with the bottom line, and I'm sure it would have been insanely costly for them to produce in Italy with that really nice leather, and they probably would have passed the cost down to us, meaning this shoe probably would have retailed for $300 to $400 versus $200. And while yes, I personally would have loved to have bought the more expensive version of the shoe with the nicer leather, because nicer leather just 
last longer in most cases. Most people probably wouldn't have, and they probably would have not sold that many pairs. So for that reason, it makes sense why they did it that way, but it is still kind of a bummer. But now let's actually get into the materials that make up this pair of Air Jordan 2s. And starting off around the mud guard of this shoe, you've got this really nice smooth white leather. Moving up from that, you've got more of the same smooth white leather accented by these perforations around the toe. And then moving up on the shoe, you get to these black flat laces that weave through these white metal eyelets at the bottom of the tongue. And then just above that, you've got these three plastic eyelets that are very similar to the Air Jordan 3. And I'm sure the Air Jordan 3 took these eyelets from the Air Jordan 2, and that's why we see them on that shoe. Underneath the laces, you've got more of that smooth white leather on the tongue, which is perforated. And then moving up to the top of the tongue, you'll notice that the tongue itself is pretty wide and pretty bulky. And stitched into the center of the tongue, you've got this red Wings logo. The Wings logo is inset into the leather tongue and has this really nice sort of rubbery texture. Moving inside the sneaker, you've got this incredibly well padded black fabric sock liner, which is also very soft to the touch. Rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got a black insole with the Nike Air branding printed on the heel in white. And that is actually the only time that that classic Nike Air branding is used on this pair of Air Jordan 2s. But now let's get into the sizing and fit of the reimagined Air Jordan 2 Chicago. And one of the things that Jordan brand was really careful about with this re release of the shoe is to make the sizing and fit and even the tooling of this shoe just like the original. And I'm happy to report that this shoe, at least for me, fits true to size. Now, I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of pairs of Air Jordan 2s. Like I said earlier on in the video, the Air Jordan 2 is not one of my favorite silhouettes, but from what I can tell, this shoe does seem to fit pretty similar to most of the modern Air Jordan 2s. All of those shoes seem to fit true to size. This one seems to be no different. So the good news is for you, if you're grabbing a pair of these or want to grab a pair of these, you should be fine going true to size. However, as I always suggest, if you have the chance to try this shoe on first before you buy it, make sure to do that to make sure that you're grabbing the right size for you. One thing you may have noticed in the on-foot portions of these videos is that I'm wearing an awesome pair of brown socks that look very familiar because they're actually the emoji socks. That's right, we at Apothecary decided that we love the emoji socks so much we wanted to make an actual pair of emoji socks. So, if you guys want to feel like you're living in the metaverse without actually having to throw on a stupid VR headset, you can grab a pair of the emoji socks and wear digital socks that are actually real socks on your feet today. Make sure to check them out at apothecary.com. Then, continuing back in the shoe, you get to the iconic faux iguana skin panel on the side of the shoe, which I didn't realize was iguana skin until I started researching the shoe a lot more in depth earlier this year. I always just thought it was like croc skin or something, but if you really look at croc skin, it's not really anything like this. So I guess it makes sense that it's faux iguana skin. I just never realized that. That's just such a odd animal to use faux skin of on an Air Jordan 2, but hey, you know, it's the 80s. Things were weird back then. Moving farther back in the shoe away from the faux iguana skin, around the top of the ankle of the shoe, you've got more of that really soft white leather, which feels incredible to the touch. I know it's not tumbled leather, but again, tumbled leather is not an indicator of quality. In fact, most really good leathers are actually smooth. Now, I'm not saying that this is really good leather. In fact, it just kind of feels like standard Jordan brand leather, but uh, it's not bad. I'll say that, it's not terrible. Wrapping around the back and bottom half of the upper, you've got this classic TPU panel that comes in both white and in red. And on the heel of the shoe, you've actually got these ribs, which are a very iconic detail for the Air Jordan 2. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of the inspirations for the classic Nike Air Yeezy 2. Rounding off the back of the shoe, around the top of the heel, you've got this black leather panel with the Nike logo pressed into it in this really nice glossy red. And then moving down on the shoe, you get to this black Air Jordan 2 midsole, which like I mentioned earlier, is completely retooled to match the original Air Jordan too. It looks pretty similar to most other Air Jordan 2s, but I'm sure there are some subtle changes. I'm sure there are some subtle differences that I don't notice, but uh, I bet they're there because if they spent all that time and money to completely retool the midsole of this shoe, it must have been for a reason. So I'm sure there are some changes. I just, I just couldn't tell you what they are. And then finally moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this red, white, and black rubber outsole, which of course features the size of the shoe pressed into the midfoot of the sneaker. As you can see, I'm a size nine. So there's this nice little nine pressed into the bottom of the shoe. I really like that detail a lot. I wish more Jordan sneakers did that. So traditionally the Air Jordan 2 has not been one of my favorite Air Jordan silhouettes, but I've got to say after seeing the attention to detail on not only this shoe, but also the packaging itself and wearing this shoe for a bit, and really just seeing how I look in this shoe, I'm obsessed with it. I think this is one of the best Air Jordan releases in a very long time. It might not be my favorite Air Jordan to release this year, I think that's reserved for the Air Jordan 1 Lost and Founds, but this shoe is a very fitting second place. And while this might not be a shoe that I throw on every day, and while I might not like this colorway as much as some other Air Jordans that have released this year, this shoe has so much history tied into it. There was so much work that was done to essentially what is a simple retro of a classic sneaker that released you know, 30 plus years ago. It's a shoe that really was done very well and I love everything about it. But hey, I would love to know your thoughts on the upcoming Air Jordan 2 OG 2022 and whether you're planning to grab a pair of these for yourself. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you all in the next one.